The countdown has started and the clock is ticking to Super Bowl 55. Today's first take is all about where we're at starting out the week as they get ready for the ultimate in NFL football. Welcome back to RGR Football. I am Ryan. This is me going rogue on the Kansas City Chiefs, the NFL, and this week, the Super Bowl. It's a lot to consider. There's a lot that goes into it. So I hope that you're here. If you're one of the new folks that have just found us because of the festivities this week, welcome. Uh, We're going to go over a number of things. And in this first take, it's going to be about where we're at, some of the commonalities and where things are going as they get ready for the run up here. Later, we'll have film in the week. I have something very special coming for you guys tomorrow night. Uh, Hopefully, it gets launched on time. If not, we'll push it back to Thursday. But should be Wednesday night, a special short film that we shot, uh, a particular photographer that's really great. And we put it all together for a Kingdom Short, our version. So that's coming tomorrow night. Don't miss that. But tonight, we're going to talk right now about where some of the players are at and what's really going on when they do these things uh, in the run-up to Super Bowl 55. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like and sub and hit the bell notifications so you know when all this stuff comes out. And you gotta click it down to all notifications if you're on mobile. Now that said, the highlight for me in the day one pressers was, uh, was really something that you heard on Locked On Chiefs on the podcast as well. So I just wanna go over here because seeing the visual is a little bit different. And it comes back to what kind of Lessons can you learn from what you did last time? And this in particular was uh, a question that got asked of Devin White, who is a particularly great linebacker, that uh, somebody that I really coveted pre-draft and really interested to see just how his career progresses. He's already at the, the height of it just about now. But it's a matchup for the linebacker level that is utterly difficult. It is the hardest matchup for any linebacker in this league right now to try and cover Travis Kelsey. Now, the teams all take a little bit different spin on it. We've seen teams try safeties. We've seen teams try big corners. We've seen teams double them up with linebackers, uh, you know, fore and aft and try to squeeze a little bit. I don't think anything, uh, any of that's going to work. So the question becomes, what is going to work? How are you guys going to do this? And when you are Devin White and you're like the most athletic linebacker, not only on this roster, but maybe in the league, uh, I know Deion Jones is watching this as well, Keep in mind him. He gets asked this question. I want you guys to hear the question and his answer and watch how he goes about answering it and what his facial mannerisms are that you didn't hear on the podcast or any of the news clips that you might have heard around the Twitter sphere. Hey, I I know it's not a one-on-one matchup by any means, but uh, what do you think about matching up with Travis Kelsey in the past game? And is there anything you can learn from, you know, the game you had against him earlier in the season? Um. Yeah, we're gonna put Levante on him. Yeah, it's not. We're gonna let Levante handle him. You know, I'm. I'm more so uh go with the backs, cover the backs. Levante more so cover the uh cover the tight end. So it really won't be a matchup. I might catch him in zone or some. And I know, I know, I know what type of routes he like to run. I know, I know all the route comes sales from the formations and where he align gives a lot. So I, I mean, if he ever in my zone. I'll be ready, but nine times out of 10 for us, one-on-one matchups, and man, it won't be me. Now, seeing it in his own words and the way that he delivers, it tells you a little bit that uh, I'm going to throw it all out. (laughs) And if that were actually true, that would be a really, really tall order. Lamonte David is still struggling to get his hamstring right. Uh, They say he's going to play. I don't think he feels like he's 100%. And what we heard the next day was that Hey, you know, I'm I'm hopeful to get out there. It is not a definite deal. So trying to put that, hey, Vontae's going to take him, no worries. Uh, that's kind of humorous to me. But what you can take from that is that none of that is going to happen. And whether, I, I thought particularly the part that, uh, that Devin White is trying not to give away his team's game plan. Um, he's a little crafty about it. And if, if you only heard it, it might have sounded more sincere than it looked to me. So what do you take away from that? Uh, in that, they're not going to put Levante on, on Travis Kelsey, especially if Levante isn't even available. Are they going to try to man him up with Devin? 
That could be one of the takeaways that he's trying to keep and not say out loud because that's their game plan. Uh, it could be something completely different in that they're going to take the zone approach and really wait to see, but I doubt that. I think that you've got to get a body on Travis Kelsey as quickly as possible if you're the Tampa Bay Bucks, because that release that the Tampa Bay Buck pressure is going to bring to them is going to be critical. And Travis is one of the key outlets. Now, Patrick can always buy time. We know that. But I think that they're going to have to use some combination. I think Devin White's going to be heavily involved in that. So remember, on uh, media week for the Super Bowl, don't take everything at face value, especially if you're not seeing the delivery. So the nice thing about YouTube and video is that you can kind of thin some of those things out. Now, that's not all that's going on. Sammy Watkins looks like he's going to be able to play that he's feeling pretty good. And then he's put a few practices together that make him feel like he's about ready. And I certainly hope that he is. I would, I would hate to see it be that thing that you always wait for playoff Sammy because he, he makes such an impact in what is relatively few reps compared to Tyreek and Travis uh, and even Hardman at this stage because Sammy's been out so long. If he can't go, it would be a surprise to me, first of all, and it's Tuesday as we record this, so um, remember that things do change. He does have a couple practices to come. Let's hope that he gets through those healthy and he's able to go. If he doesn't, um, that calls into question all kinds of things about what do you do next season? Do you bring him back? I think he will come back if he wants to come back. He said as much on Tuesday, and I think it's all about the dollars and cents and getting under the cap. number. So we'll save that for a later discussion. But Sammy, if he's there, is the X factor because I do think, along with what Devin's trying to hide about their their concept on Travis, I do think they have to double Tyreek High as well. And so I expect to see the evolution from what we saw Todd do late in the second half in the Week 12 matchup and then what he did throughout um, that, that last month of the season and going into the playoffs. You saw Cover 2 a lot against the Packers. I think they're getting more comfortable in that, and that may have been not just a way to defense the Packers, but to prepare for the Chiefs, because I think they have to see cover four. I think they have to see cover two, maybe some man under it. Talked with Therese uh, this week as well. You can hear that on Locked on Chiefs on Tuesday. It should be out by now. And he, he confirmed, like, two man you could get away with. I personally wouldn't do that, um, but it is what it is. I think you're going to see some six as well. I don't think they're going to get into the deep inversion things that the Chiefs do, which is funny because when the Chiefs go too high, oftentimes they're switching out nickels for safety. And that is part of how you progress to confuse Tom Brady. So while you might see some of that from Tampa Bay, you're definitely going to see it from the Chiefs. And that leads to Tyra Matthew being the robber versus the nickel versus the high. And he's going to move around with LJ Snead back on the practice field. I expect him to play and start and play well in this matchup. One thing that he'll have to deal with, which he did pretty good uh, last time, he only allowed 10 yards covering Godwin out of the slot, and I think that's going to be a matchup. I think Scotty Miller's going to get some reps, but for all the hype around uh, his statements this week, Scotty Miller only played 10 snaps against the Chiefs the first time, and it's been very, very sprinkled in through the process. So don't think that that's a prime matchup, although I think that his change of direction may be something the Chiefs have to be a little bit worried about. But overall, I think it's about Tom Brady and about messing up his delivery, whether it's jamming and disrupting routes at the receiver level or sending blitzers to get to Tom and get him off of his spot. Now, at 43 years old, Tom Brady's still very functional, but if you get him off of his spot, I think he drops off in terms of accuracy a whole lot more than he used to. He's never been a particularly uh, agile athlete from the pocket, and so moving him has always been the goal. But I think now when you do and you affect his, his positioning within the pocket, I think it affects his accuracy a whole lot more, uh, as well as his ability to deliver deep. But if you don't get there, that's the risk that you take because he can still throw a good ball. You saw that last time that they were on the field, so that's something to take away. And there are a number of things that we're going to look up matchup-wise later in the week. Like I said, we have that short film that's going to come out. Dan has a film room session that he's getting ready. And then we'll have the game plan Friday. We're going to do a live stream this time. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions, and we'll go through all the little bits and pieces that we see as the game plan for the Chiefs to get another championship on this run-it-back season. Then we'll have uh, some coverage over the weekend with Danilo in the Kingdom Corner, and I'll have something for you Sunday morning, some kind of, hey, let's, let's get up and get ready kind of video. So, again, you don't want to miss it. Click the like and the sub and the bell notification if you're not already a sub. 
And if you're a member, we have something for you tonight as well, something special behind the scenes. We'll get back to the member benefits. You can always join down here in the join button as well. So leave your comments. What are you guys concerned and how do you take some of these things today? Appreciate your time and checking this one out and we'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.